Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to Civilization 6 where we are playing as Russia and we are going for a very, very powerful build. Namely built around this super powerful Yosemite and the fact that we have massive, massive district adjacency with work ethic that is currently being doubled by scripture. So we are getting an insane amount of production, 20 production from my laver in my capital. This honestly just makes Russia kind of OP. So the city of Novgorod is in pretty good shape. We have a couple of options about where we want to go next. The most logical option for us to go for is for the theater squares. I think that is like a totally reasonable thing to do. We could also go for Colosseum here. If I use my city overlap map mode, we could see that there's actually a six city overlap over here on the left. And that would potentially go up a lot higher. So perhaps Arkhangelsk would be the city to go for the Colosseum. If I were to go for it right here, I could make a big difference depending on how the cities work out. Another option is for me to go for commercial hubs. It would significantly delay. Well, I suppose if I faith purchase the Gurdwara and I go for the commercial hub and I trade internally, I would get to theater squares in a still pretty reasonable amount of time. It would delay things slightly, but it would allow me to play much more tall with those internal trade routes. There are a significant number of great merchants that actually give you tourism benefits. So I think I'm going to go for it. So I'll pop down a commercial hub there. That'll be fine. And let's get the settler moving over to that cattle. Everything is, I think, I think that works out for me. I think we will go for the, th we're not probably not going to make that decision in every city. It's going to be based on the amount of food and stuff that we have in the city and like the individual situation. We have to take that into account. Does this actually get me the golden age? No, unfortunately. Uh, we definitely need to think about getting mathematics. We definitely need to think about getting construction, apprenticeship and mathematics. And I think we're going to do it in that kind of an order. Right. The, ah, yes. Feudalism is what we needed to finish off this era. So now I can come in here. I can drop off Core V. I can take Surf them. And now my bot settlers will have five build charges, which means we are churning along nicely. Right. Now that we have feudalism, we need to think about what our next government is. And I think for Russia, the natural evolution is to go for theocracy here for the extra 15% discount with faith, 0.5 faith per citizen in cities with governors. This kind of all lines up with how we want to go. Um, but I think it would be good. I think we definitely want to pick up recorded history. We definitely want to pick up military tradition and military training because that we're kind of missing military tradition, which is probably hurting our war efforts slightly. We are actually at war, believe it or not. It's not going incredibly well for our opponent, but we are in a war. Divine right has been boosted. There's military tradition. Our military performance should be slightly better. I'm going to faith buy one more settler. And that should be me done settling for the rest of the game. Unless I really want a settler on that desert. We will consider that in due course. There's a city state popping up here in the not too distant future. 10 plus turns. I'm sure if I can hire another man at arms from there. That would uh, bring that down to a more sensible number. I could upgrade to crossbowman. You have extra defensive strengths for being in a district, whereas you don't. So I'm going to upgrade this guy to a crossbow uh, and then just play it by ear. So we have our temple in the city of Yaroslavl. We kind of are faced with the same discussion. Like, do we want to go for the commercial hub? Do we want to go for this theater square, etc.? We could go for the Kilwa and Kilwa is helpful, especially in a barbarian clans game. 24 turns Kilwa in Novgorod versus a 29 turn Kilwa in Yaroslavl. If I do get Kilwa in Yaroslavl, yeah, it'll give me a better theater square. So if I could get like a little chunk of extra gold, maybe. There we go. There's a chunk of gold that we need. We can buy the tile and immediately get to work on the Kilwa. It's not the most important wonder to get, but it is quite good. Monument in Olenets is completed. I think the city was supposed to go for that. I'll put a turn. I'll, I'll place the theater square, but I'll get to work on a granary. I want that city to grow. It's kind of more important than anything else it does. We settled Nizhny Novgorod and we have to do a little bit of tile. Okay, we've got the tiles. Fortunately, your laver is never going to be amazing. Does that mean we want to go for a laver or would we rather go for something else? I mean, a plus three laver is still fine. It's just not mind blowing. So I think to that end, we will place the laver, but I would, I would probably prioritize like monument granary or watermill granary maybe higher to get the growth because this these these tiles actually have production on them so we want to be able to work more tiles which means we want more food i think that makes a little bit more sense to me uh let's chop here for magnus to finish the mathematics we can get that market going we will send a trade route from smolensk to saint petersburg i could also send it from yaroslavl to saint petersburg or if i put the trade route in novgorod novgorod will get the seven population faster which means i get that theater square faster so that's where i'll put it and then it can move its trader to somewhere else so amazingly against all odds we have actually managed to get a golden age and we're going to take monumentality again because why wouldn't we when we have this much faith per turn we're making what a hundred and 64 faith per turn casually just a casual 164 faith per turn and this is where we're going to start buying a lot of builders 
Um, and to that end, I may as well grab Liang and I'll put her into Arkhangelsk. This will be like, this is a relatively central area where I can, where I can faith buy builders from. And it'll be an extra plus one charge, which is, you know, a nice little bit of an efficiency boost. Go ahead and see if we can't kill this. Okay, he's done for. So we managed to get an uh, audience chamber in my capital. I think the big thing would be, again, to continue to grow this city. So getting things like ancient uh, or, or granary and watermill are the most important things, right? Because I need the plus two food. We're also missing a few tile improvements, but we're kind of prioritizing working these. There's definitely a mine over here. I should also long term start thinking about things like uh, where are my... So how I'm winning this game is very obviously culture-based, I feel like. I have a huge faith income. I'm going to be moving into the cultural end of the tech tree. I'm not far away from getting conservation and stuff like that and, and starting down that direction. So that's kind of the pathway that's opened up for me here. Let's go ahead and trade with St. Petersburg. An extra three food will grow the city basically twice as fast. And then another thing that I think we're missing is to get the Gurdwara in here. Um, we could probably justify hard building it. So we will, obviously, after the market finishes, because there's an extra trader from that market. And plus 10 religious combat strength for hard work. Seems fine by me. And then I would prefer if Simon Bolivar was the target of the plus 100% grievances. I could, theoretically, I could go fight him and kill him, because I'm militarily probably his equal, because he has, like, no military score. His cities are vulnerable to trebuchets. I could research trebs right now and go kill him. Um, but how important is that to me, that I kill him? It's honestly not that important. Right, so we got the temple in Kazan. I definitely feel like we hired build the Gurdwara for the extra growth. Two food might not seem like much, but it is a big game changer when we're in a Tundra game. Just because you miss so much food and production in a Tundra game. So getting Gurdwara really kind of shores up that weakness that we have. So a couple of city state emergency failed. We do have military training now. Let's go ahead and make our way at least towards Divine Right and Reformed Church, I guess. Um, keep Blast in here. Swamp. Send Envoy. If we put an Envoy into Cardiff... We would get two envoys in Cardiff, which would be quite good. Any city-state missions I can easily do? Celestial Navigation, what is that? I think Celestial Navigation is two galleys. Yeah, so I could easily buy myself another galley and see that move pay dividends. I'd need like a little bit more gold. Any salt buyers? Any iron buyers? There you go. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a second galley. That's a boost for shipbuilding, which should now get me... Oh, two sea resources. Sorry, mixed them up. We should be able to do that just as easily if we faith buy a builder here. We faith buy a builder here. Where is my most likely next city for a commercial hub? Well, it's probably going to be Yaroslavl, so I'll buy a trader in here. God, it's it, like faith is actually insane. It like completely breaks the game. The fact that you can buy things with faith. So kind of similarly in here, we don't have very good theater squares, but we can kind of think a little bit logically about the layout of our empire, about where certain things might go. Like there's definitely the potential here for like national parks. And, you know, if we're doing national parks, the holy site will be surrounded by a decent amount of forest. So like a holy site here could theoretically have a couple of forests next to it. Like this looks quite reasonable. Two national parks here. Um, there could be another national park over here. Seems good to me. Then again, we could move this national park and instead go for a commercial hub plus a theater square and then have another national park down here. So we could like rearrange things. This is like looking okay. Do I want these cities to cooperate with their adjacency at all? Well, that's a good question. I'll have to think about that. But in the meantime, uh, it will be commercial hub first in some of these cities. So I'm probably not going to get a golden age for the next era, which I'm fine with. Um, two golden ages in a row is honestly enough to really, really get you a good start out into the game. Let's trade with St. Petersburg for the food and production over here. That'll shave a few turns off Kilwa. Most of my cities are following my religion. It would be nice to make sure I just have everything following my religion. So let's get our first fishing resource online. Perfect. We'll get another one online next turn. We have our galleys in position. So why are you growing so poorly and so slowly? Ah, it's because low amenities too. Well, let's see if we can't do something about that. Amenity seller. Uh, would Simon like peace? So he's still kind of stuck up on the idea of war. I mean, if he really does want to continue being at war, we can continue being at war. That's a choice that he can he can have. Okay, we got the temple in Arkhangelt. So this is going to be a thing. Plus two commercial hub. This is also going to eventually be a national park so we need to we need to consider where we position things kind of very carefully long term so a commercial hub here is fine this could be a national park as well right we have a we have a spare copy of truffles so we don't need that second one that'll be fine once it's later in the game uh -huh, okay so a commercial hub here is reasonable although if i put the commercial up here yeah if i put the commercial up here this could be a theater square and that would give extra appeal adjacency there's probably a national park across Yosemite, because national parks, including 
national or natural wonders are kind of fun and there's probably a national park over here so we're just kind of like laying out the groundwork for where national parks might go later on in the game so and that's just so i remember where not to put districts because it sucks if your strategy incorporates going for national parks and you forget where you were going to put them and then all of a sudden you can't put them there like that just doesn't feel good so i need a tiny chunk more gold any buyers of my wares uh, 58 gold that might be enough to buy these whales ah, just four gold short shy there you go another 24 gold that's perfect so if i come into all the nets i can buy this tile i can bring this builder over immediately improve that there's the boost for celestial navigation giving me control of cardiff i'll bring this galley up to be able to reclaim my builder when this galley inevitably inevitably takes it right apprenticeship this gives me plus one production on my mines, which is quite handy. And we also have natural philosophy coming through. What have we got here? Uh, Magnus Liang could theoretically boost surplus logistics and put him into the capital. I think I would rather use Magnus for chopping for now. Like there's an argument to be made to move him to Yaros level and then chop out Kilwa just to get that a little bit sooner. Uh, let's get Celestial Navigation and Shipbuilding because there's two theoretical wonders here that I would really like to grab. They're a little bit late into the game, but, you know, they could be they could be quite helpful. We will go for the Gurdwara for the extra food, housing and growth and all that sort of lovely stuff that it, that it does bring with it. Very helpful. Um, let's go ahead and get the plantation here. Another luxury resource helping out my empire. Surprisingly, that galley did not go for my builder. OK, this city converts anyway, so we'll just convert Astrakhan. Astrakhan shall be all converted. So all these cities are now following my religion. I think it could be worth it for me to send a couple of um, missionaries up north because I'm not seeing a religion inside India. I don't think India ever founded a religion. Are India going for one? They are, but really slowly. So I could theoretically send a couple of you know, missionaries up here spread my religion. This would give me extra religious tourism. Don't know. Eh, we'll have to we'll have to consider the possibility as as a potential move for us to take. But as it currently stands, it's not it's not part of our, our part of our game plan. Oh, the city state is coming forward here. I could take Maracaibo if I decided to be a little bit aggressive with a couple of units. I could send like a couple crossbows and some of these purchased military units. Maybe we'll we'll do a little tentative thrust towards them. Um, I would love to get my Diplo Quarter. I also want to get my Gurdwara. I'm going to Faith buy the Gurdwara and then hard build the Diplo right there. Gurdwara is well underway. Perfect. Novgorod, you've got 10 turns to grow, which is pretty reasonable. Go ahead and get me that trader. Did one of my traders get murked? I think maybe it did. Annoying, annoying. If we look at the city of Astrakhan, let's have a look at a good Labra location. There's a plus three here. National Park here. There could be a National Park here too. And if there's a National Park going there, then I may as well have the Lavra be a part of that National Park. It's going to go like right there. And trust me, we will have the faith for these National Parks, okay? Our faith is going to be insane. I mean, theoretically, our faith is already insane and we're just like on the pathway. I really don't want this guy to clear this camp. I really want these camps to survive. Although this one is less important because it's next to Mogadishu and that's already a city-state. Gurdwara completed in Kazan. The city is also growing at a reasonable pace. You could make an argument for going for Ancient Walls at this point. Um, I would I would want to have the Ancient Wall card plugged in. I need these guys to finish growing up. They're imminent, imminently going to turn into a city-state, which means I don't need to worry about them too much, which means I could probably start teching into wall tech now. Er the earlier in the game you build these walls, the better the payout is. As the game gets later and later, it becomes less valuable to do this. Quick check, Valletta's not in the game? No, it's a card, okay. Um, I also need to think about, I need to think about getting to cartography to um, explore and find more city-states and reveal the map. So I think I'm going to tech in the direction of cartography, but I might not finish it immediately. Um, we'll go ahead and get started on the harbour in Tula, but this city's going to need builders. Oh shoot, I didn't mean to put a builder there. Crap. Okay, I just lost a builder because I'm dumb. <laughs> it happens. Okay, Maracaibo built walls, which means it's unlikely we're going to go kill it. So I'll just, I'll just step back and I'll let the city-state duke it out. Um, I definitely want the consulate for the extra two Influence points per turn. This will allow me to get envoys faster. Um, an extra two points. That's like a 60% increase. That's a pretty good rate increase. And I have a spare envoy as well. I'd really like to get Suzerain of Nan Madal. So I'm going to work on that one. I don't have any wonders to build. I could build units. There's no reason for me to build units. I could do commercial hub projects. This is a free trader. If I do that. Zhang Chan is a really, really powerful one to pick up. Do we have any tiles worth improving? We have some tiles worth improving, so I don't know if a builder is appropriate in here. Um, I don't know if I need a settler 
I mean, I could put one here, but I don't think it's necessary. It seems like an awful lot of work for something that doesn't pay off very well. I mean, every builder that I hard build is a builder I don't have to faith purchase, which is technically a saving. So I'll throw down an extra two builders and maybe by the time we finish those, we'll be uh, cooking with diesel. Let's go ahead and continue to buy builders in Arkhangelsk. The city of Olenets really needs growth more than anything. So let's try and force it to work two food tiles so I can get to four population a little bit faster. I'm going to force the city of Tambov to work a three food tile so it'll grow faster. It'll go back to work in the high production tiles. It's okay. Grow Growth, uh, the, when a city's population is below four, growth is far more important than production. And then kind of in like the four to seven range, that's when production starts to become just about as valuable as food. And then from like the seven to um, ten range, that's where like production is more valuable. So that's usually the arc you kind of want your city to go through. All right, let's faith purchase a builder over here in Yaroslavl. I want to trade with St. Petersburg. I'm not sure how this trade route got killed originally, but it should be fine. Shouldn't happen again, I don't think. Honestly, it could be worth it for me to like pre-purchase all the builders ever. At the very least, it should be worth it for me to like faith purchase builders in Arkhangelsk because there are six charge builders. Um, this city needs to grow. So getting the market and the Gurdwara seems like a good move. That'll help the city grow. Looking at the city of Kazan, it's another four turns until it grows to its next pop. Let's go ahead and get started on... I guess just having lots of builders in the bank will make the later stages of the game so much easier. Like, insanely easier. Um, because when I retool for national parks, I'm going to want to have a lot of builders. And I could even chop out projects. I could theoretically go for a science victory here too, if I really wanted to. Although that kind of does require secret societies to really pump up the jam as fast as possible. I mean, having Moksha is not the worst thing in the world, as is having Reina. So I think I'm going to go grab Reina because I want forestry management for later. Although I think, yeah, I'll, I'll get Reina first. And I'm going to think like, which city is going to have the most national parks? And it's probably going to be Arkhangelsk is going to have the most. But for now, I'll put her in Nizhny Novgorod. So what I'm looking for now are tiles that I'm working that I can improve to give me more tempo. It's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to increase my tempo so I can get to the late game faster and then do my tech switch to national parks easier. I know I'm going for a delayed theater square strategy, which is probably not optimal. It's probably going to slow down my wind speed, but I think it's more interesting. It's a more interesting and fun strategy. It's not necessarily optimal, but it is fun. All right, let's run back with this spearman. You step forward, become a man at arms. We're kind of getting a little bit screwed here, but that's okay. This needs to belong to Yaros level, so I can actually chop out the Kilwa faster. There's four turns off the Kilwa. I'll bring a crossbowman this way as well. I'm surprised he doesn't want peace, considering he's got nowhere in the war. We have a consulate in my capital city. We have three fully built districts. We're waiting for the city to hit the next population level. I could build the Ayayayayaya Sophia. It's not a bad wonder. Uh, when does it unlock? I think it's up here somewhere. Top half, right? It's at buttresses. So it's a medieval era wonder. And I could build it before the era was over. It would, Jennifer, it would generate quite a bit of era score over the course of the game. Yeah, let's do it. The city's not doing anything else for 15 turns. I mean, I could be pre-building builders, but I think uh, building wonders actually represents a significant amount of tourism potential. Um, I think for a very, very long time, I underestimated how powerful tourism from wonders is but if you actually look at the numbers uh, for the production investment like for three tourism per turn right now off Mahabodhi that's actually not bad tourism generation from a production investment standpoint um, they get less efficient the higher the era is but generally anything from like medieval and before is super super worth it in terms of tourism um, well if you have if you have production boosts. Without production boosts, it becomes a little bit harder to justify. All right, I was meant to do this. I was meant to take out discipline and plug in Limes so I can build walls faster. There is an argument to be made that I should just mass produce builders on like the last turn of this era rather than continuously purchasing six charge builders. I mean, that's a valid argument, but I'm still going to do it the way that I'm doing it. Yeah, let's continue to buy builders. I'm going to, yeah. I want to faith purchase builders because the opportunity to faith purchase builders will go away eventually. So if I can build them every nearly every turn, I'm slowly creeping my way towards a place that I couldn't normally get to. So Smolensk has finished its Lavra. It's finished the ancient walls. I think we go for the commercial hub. Let's kind of think about positioning here. Um, there's definitely a national park here on the right side. Yeah, that's a good spot for it. And so it'd be pretty reasonable to put a theater square down here in the southeast. Astrakhan is in a position. This city has food, so it's less important for me to get to the Gurdwara. So I'll just keep the holy site. And otherwise, I'll go for the watermill as a filler thing before we go for the commercial hub. 
The trade routes are more important to me. Yeah, but I basically want to improve every single hill in my empire because every shred of production I can squeeze out means I get to that late game faster. There is an argument to be made that I can skip going for mines playing as Russia, but I could just do both. Why not do by both? Why not go for mines and then use builders to empire switch later? Why wouldn't I just do both? Right, time to grab Lee Bai as our second great rider. We do want to start getting our theater square soon and it's not too long until Novgorod can start its first one. So I'll just quickly do that and you'll pop down here. Pop down here. Yep, I want Susan to have Nan Madal because that should be, yep, an extra 10 culture per turn. That's really, really good. I would like Kumasi eventually. That'll be a big friend of mine in the mid to late game. Yeah, I think I'm just going to hard tech cartography just because it's that important to me to be able to explore the other continents of the world. Um, and there's even an argument to be made that I should settle a city here just so I can get a boat out onto the right side and find even more city states. In fact, that is so useful. I'm going to do it. I think a lot of people underestimate how important it is to scout in the mid game to find city states. I don't think I want to chop without Magnus present. I think I can move Magnus around my entire empire and do a bunch of chopping for wonders. Speaking of which, boom, there's Kilwa, plus three envoys when built. When you are the suzerain of a city-state, this city receives a 15% boost to the type bonuses provided by the city-state. And if you're a suzerain of two or more city-states of that type, an additional 15% boost is given to all of your cities. So basically what this is saying, if I can get a suzerainty of two cultural city-states, my entire empire will get a 15% culture boost and this city will get a 30% culture boost because I'm already suzerain of a city-state. Kilba is giving me a 15% boost in this city. So I think our big goal this game will be to get control of Nan Madal and Kumasi. Those are going to be our two major pushes. And the good news is we could go for a theater square in here really, really quickly. Now, do I want to go commercial hub or do I want to go straight theater square? That's actually an interesting question. Also, we need to consider that I had totally meant to go for the Colosseum here. It's still possible. No, it's not. I can't believe it. I messed up. I had an eight city overlapping Colosseum and I messed it up by building a theater square, commercial hub, or yeah. I could kill a national park to get an eight city Colosseum. And I think that is viable. There are food tiles that I can chop to force the city to higher population. That's what we're going to do. Otherwise, I'm going to go for the Gurdwara and I'll go for the commercial hub in here as well. You might be asking, why are you going commercial hubs when you have tithe? And it's just like, you know what, man? I like having a lot of gold, okay? I just like having a lot of gold. Plus there's some really interesting um, great merchants that give you tourism. So I thought, hey, maybe I could, maybe I could have like uh, my cake and eat it, you know? This will be a, this will be a slower build than if I had just, cult like if I had just done a hardcore culture rush. But I mean, it'll be a more fun build. That's the important thing, is we're having a good time. I'm going to start putting builders to sleep now for later um, because I just, I don't have anything to improve with them. Really? It would be nice to get a friendship and theoretically an alliance with Chandra Gupta. Either cultural or economic is fine. I'll go for a cultural alliance. So the city of Novgorod has hit seven population, which means we can now get our theater square. There's a plus four theater square there. I think I'd like to chop that before I do that. So I'll spend one turn on a trader. And Kazan has reached four population, which means it can get its own really good adjacency commercial hub. But I would like to chop first. So we'll step in here. Commercial hub is six turns. I chop this tile. Boom. Commercial hub is now four turns. Not bad. JPEG. We're going to promote you with forestry management just for the future. It's part of the plan. Just so we don't forget. You know, I could be a forgetful guy. So I sometimes I, I have to make a make a little bit of compromise on what I'll remember and what needs to be done. So I want to make sure this is owned by the correct city. Right. The wheat is owned by Arkhangelsk. I harvest the wheat that forces us to six population. And then we're four turns from going to seven, which means we can place the entertainment complex here and go for the Giga Colosseum, um, which is also going to trigger me to move Magnus to Arkhangelsk. And I'm going to remove Liang to Novgorod, I guess. That seems reasonable to me. So I'm going to chop here. The overflow goes through. We immediately go for the theater square. That's a plus four theater square. That should trigger a Eureka moment. You are going to go immediately over to Kazan. Aya Sophia is only seven turns from being completed. Trade with St. Petersburg, that's four food, three production. Amazing. Really, really good. St. Petersburger. <laughs> he misspoke. We did. Okay, so Kamasi did spawn down here. That's really good. I'm really curious to see who will spawn here. I'm going to faith buy, or I'm going to gold purchase a galley, actually. To see if they can uh, advance a little bit sooner. All right, nice. We have monarchy, although monarchy is not the religion we want to go for, or, or government, rather. It wouldn't be bad to build Mont St. Michel. We could theoretically get a few relics and we can build it pretty reasonably in my capital. The only problem is it's my one big food tile that I would have to give up. My capital is getting a little bit cramped for, for tiles as we speak. So we'll have to consider that a little bit carefully. But yeah, we're waiting out for Reformed Church. 
I've become the su- first suzerain of a city-state. Who was that? Ah, I think I took Kumasi. That's great. They want me to recruit a great scientist. Okay. It wouldn't be bad to take Bandar Brunei, and I will. It's another two era score. Very nice. And so now that I'm suzerain of two cultural city-states, if I come here to my capital city, you can see here I'm getting... Uh, well, it should be maybe a different city. A 15% um, modifier here across my entire empire for culture. And 15%, eh, it's, no, it's not much on an individual city, but it's a lot across an empire. Unfortunately, I kind of screwed the pooch, so I won't be able to fit a national park in here, um, sadly. But there's nothing that, you know, I think getting a Colosseum is probably on par with getting a national park. Eh, yeah, I think that's a reasonable statement. Right, we'll settle here, and then we immediately just start chain purchasing galleys and quads to explore to the east the second that we have cartography. We don't actually care if the city flipped independent. That's not its purpose. It exists just to be a gateway to the east. All right, perfect. Uh, theater square completed. There's the plus three error score. And now we can immediately come in here, get to work on this. And soon we'll be able to start placing more great works. Uh, let's go for the entertainment complex in Arkhangelsk as planned. And we are going to do some chopping to get through that a little bit quicker. Make sure all the correct tiles are owned by the correct cities. Yeah, there's only three chops in here, sadly. But it should be enough. 12 turn Colosseum. We can shave that off quite a bit. Let's give it a little, give it a little shave down there. Shave off a few turns and we'll be happy as Larry. Uh, we have uh, Zhang Chen has been grabbed. And I'm going to keep him for the capital because I want to be trading inter... I want to be trading trading internally to my capital. So that's kind of like the goal. Um, market completed in Smolensk. Let's go ahead and get that market up. And, or rather, commercial hubs completed. Let's get the market going. So we're just getting our trade up right now. We have an amazing faith economy. We have an amazing culture economy. We have an amazing science economy. Like, look at this, right? We're ahead on culture. So, you know, we're... We're fire every cylinder is firing exactly as it should. Right, we'll chop here, that'll finish the arena, and we can come in and do a nine turn eight city coliseum. Now that is a rarity to see a coliseum that powerful. So Magnus has done his job in here. I think I'm gonna move him over to Tula now so we can boost up Tula and get that city up and running a little bit faster. So I'll get a few builders making their way over to the Tula direction. This is the beauty of like being able to move Magnus around during a uh, Monumentality Golden Age. Let's just grab as many forests as we possibly can. Four turns until cartography. I'm actually quite excited to go see what the the, the rest of the world has in store for me. Who knows what, what secrets it holds. Um, right, so we have Hagia Sophia. So our missionaries and apostles can spread religion an extra one time. This is actually quite a big efficiency boost, especially if we now go for theocracy. And we will go for theocracy because... It's just like the natural evolution here. We could have an autocratic legacy. We definitely want to have limes in. We could also go for retainers. Retainers seems like a pretty good move. Simultaneum is quite good for the faith gain. Although, do we care? Is 27 faith more worth more than autocratic legacy? It probably is, to be honest with you. Considering how high adjacency we have, I don't really see a need for pretty much anything else here. Um, I think we're basically self-sufficient if we do this. Plus, we can start taking control of retainers and actually getting a benefit from all these units that we've built across the game. Do you think I can get this kill? I wonder if I do this. Right, great. Yeah, so I'm going to start moving units out to be garrisons. Uh, and whatever the cheapest unit I have is, once I have my Grandmaster's Chapel, I'll start buying them like crazy. I really would like Mont Saint michel and St. Basil's, but I'm kind of, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that's what I want to do. So instead, I will go for... Oh, this is, a, this is actually a tough choice. Grandmaster's Chapel, I think, appeals to me the most because it's a faith game. So that just seems like the most logical choice to me. Right, so with Reformed Church, now we have to think about what our next step in the game is. So we have our Tier 2 government, which will give us a huge discount on faith purchases, as well as a nice boost to our faith generation. I think our next step is to just start hitting the notes on the way to conservation. And the notes that we want to hit on the way to conservation are uh, diplomatic service to pick up the chancery for extra influence stuff. And plus, we can also go for VISA banking for international trade if we decide to go for an alliance trade route strategy. It's usually a good idea to have mercenaries, so we will make sure that we grab that. I don't think we particularly care about researching exploration. We'll go for nationalism could be important, but we don't need to go straight for it. We definitely want humanism. Could be a Taj Mahal game, could be archaeological art museum games. Like, we, well, we will want those things. We're kind of getting to the point where we want to start considering to build them. So it's definitely that kind of game. It's just like a matter of when, where, how, etc. So I have basically all of the tiles that I want improved in my empire, which means I can start putting builders to sleep, like I was saying earlier. And they'll just be in position ready for the second that I get conservation to completely transform, do like a terraforming project, completely turn every tile into a, a, um, a what you call a tile, a forest tile. Right, nice. First commercial hub with adjacency of four gold or higher completed. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Two turns until Magnus is done in here. 
Um, we're actually getting a really good era score. Don't know if I'm going to Golden Age, but maybe a Normal Age is on the cards. I'm trying to think, where are my trade routes coming from? Novgorod, Yaroslav, and, and Kazan. So perhaps it would be good to get one into Smolensk. Yes, I definitely feel like that would be the move. All right, we have our first amphitheater up. Let's go ahead and drop two great works into it ASAP. I don't think we need an aqueduct. We could go for St. Basil's Cathedral in here. And in all honesty, what a based decision to make. Is this the city to do it in? Really doesn't have that many tundra tiles. Kazan feels like the city to do it in, but Kazan is a bit busy. Well, like, I mean, if I think about this, right, I could swap in a little bit of forest. I would have two, three forest shops with Magnus. So yeah, let's go for the St. Basil's Cathedral. For sure. If I put it here, I have an amazing commercial hub or a theater square. So I will put it there because I want that amazing commercial hub. Even if I kill a good Tundra Hill tile, I don't care. I just want that. I want the, the huge, huge yields. I would love to build Kotoku in, but I don't want to build it on this tile. So instead, this city's just going to do theater square festivals to get as many great people as possible. At least until it gets to 10 pop or uh, I can build new buildings in it. So we'll just keep it busy. Continue trading with St. Petersburg. Why don't you go ahead and grab me another trader? Probably pop that one into Tula. Just continuously developing these cities. My stats are incredible. At a certain point, though, there is like a diminishing return to stats. And, and just for people who don't know, stats basically means like production, culture, science. At a certain point, there's a diminishing return. Like going from 10 science to 20 science is huge. Going from 200 science to 210 science not that huge right so there's a diminishing return so you generally you want to maximize stats during one phase of the game and then you want to look to do another thing at another phase of the game right now i could i could still use a decent amount of um culture so it's not like more stats is bad like more stats is just more stats is almost always generally good but there's a diminishing return that's that's the key takeaway that you have to be aware of. Okay, I think this many units over here should be enough. That's like five boats. That should allow me to like completely explore the eastern half of this world. I'm genuinely shocked that we haven't gotten through the medieval era. I guess it's been a really jam-packed era and we've done a lot of like really, really important economic things. We've set ourselves up. We've made it a, a huge amount of builders. All right, there we go. More era score. All right, nice cartography. So that means our fishing boats are better and we can now explore. I'm going to just put auto explore on all these galleys because I really don't, want to micromanage it because I've already microed super hard this game. It's about time that we pick up medieval walls and renaissance walls because it's about the time of the game where we actually do that now, where we actually build them. Especially if we're coming up to a world congress that gives us an extra hunter production towards them. Somebody actually did the math on it and uh, building renaissance walls and stuff like that is fairly comparable to building like cheap wonders, you know, um, as long as you have the production boost. So it's not amazing, but it's okay. Um, so another thing we need to do is start getting our garrisons up as well. All right, Magnus is established here. Let's chop here. That finishes that harbor. Uh, we would really like the Colossus because that's like a good wonder. So let's do a couple big old chops here. Boom, boom. Then we want to make sure that the city has good tiles. We definitely want to chop this tile, actually. Um, but yeah, just making sure the city has good production is the goal. Otherwise, I put my builders to sleep. I'm building up a huge reserve of builders down here to the south. We've got a market in Yaroslavl. Let's go ahead and get that trader. So we're looking at the city of Tambov. I'd really like to build the Lavra in here. I'll place that. But I definitely still want to get the monument and the commercial hub. Right, we have another chop in the city of Tula. That basically finished the Colossus in like a couple of turns, which is like a free trader, which is amazing because we can trade with St. Petersburg now. That puts us in an amazing position. We'll go for the granary and the lighthouse in here now. And we may as well harvest actually, because that'll force us up to a higher population. And we can come in here and actually place this amazing lavra but i will go granary lighthouse lavra in that order although mm, actually now that i've seen the lavra the lavra like in seven turns we could get plus 10 production in the city so that seems like actually a pretty damn good deal um, and magnus is now done in this city we could move him to all the and i think we will move him to all the and basically do the exact same thing that we just did even if we were planning to move him to kazan I want to get those wonders. Wonders wonders just have so much value like four tourism per turn it's like an extra having an extra couple of great works of writing um, and it only gets better as the game goes on. I'm going to see if I can steal this high food tile to let the city grow in one turn to four pop, because then I can place the harbor um, in the not too distant future and get these builders positioned. We've got the trader in Smolensk. We're waiting for the city to grow to seven population. 
We could build a Kotoku Inn. Let me have a little think about that. I have a national park going here. A national park would fit here quite well, eventually, when we do all the stuff we need to do to make that work, which kind of means we can't build a Kotoku Inn here. A national park would fit here pretty comfortably too. Okay, yeah, so we've got like a lot of national parks planned out, which means we have to be very careful where we place infrastructure, um, which also means, unfortunately, the city is just not going to do anything. But I can get a spy in here. That seems reasonable. But yeah, we have we have set ourselves up for an explosive mid-game. We have an incredible amount of builders stocked up and we're continuing to stock them. We are mere turns like maybe an era away from getting conservation we're going to start building our wall soon so the second we hit conservation probably by the end of the next episode we're going to see insane faith and tourism numbers um, which is really really exciting this is a really really fun game uh, but that's going to be it from me i love you all very much and i'll see you guys next time bye bye